Every AI and tech company is positioning for the incoming administration, and the latest is OpenAI, who have just released a blueprint for America. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. We are about a week away from the transition between the Biden administration and the second Trump administration, and there is definitely a bunch of jockeying and repositioning going on. The Information wrote about this at the end of last week. That piece they called Amazon downplays DEI, Meta plays up free speech as tech tilts right. Now, the specific catalyst for that was Mark Zuckerberg of Meta announcing that they would be ending their relationship with fact checkers and moving to a community fact checking approach. And Zuckerberg even went on Joe Rogan to defend the position after it became controversial, reinforcing the idea that the company had faced what he called massive institutional pressure to basically start censoring content. But in the AI space specifically, there is definitely a meta conversation starting to happen between the big labs and incoming President Donald Trump, even if he's not aware of it. For Long Read Sunday this week, one of the pieces we read came from Anthropic CEO Dario Amade, who published a piece in the Wall Street Journal called Trump Can Keep America's AI Advantage. Now, we paired that with a piece by Tyler Cowen about how the recent Chinese model from DeepSeek made him reconsider just how effective chip export prohibitions and other pillars of AI policy vis-a-vis China would actually be. And interestingly, in an interview around the release of this new piece from OpenAI, Chris Lehane, who runs policy at OpenAI, technically he's their VP for global affairs, said that the release of that model which was an open source model getting near 01 performance and claimed to have been trained for just $5.5 million, was something that they had taken notice of as well. So what we got this morning was a much more comprehensive approach to this conversation from OpenAI. The piece is called AI in America, OpenAI's Economic Blueprint. It runs 15 pages long and sets out a policy agenda that expands upon many of the ideas that have shown up in the op-ed pages over the last six months or so. In his forward letter, Chris Lehane writes, We believe America needs to act now to maximize AI's possibilities while minimizing its harms. AI is too powerful a technology to be led and shaped by autocrats, but that is the growing risk we face, while the economic opportunity AI presents is too compelling to forfeit. And so, of course, here we have echoes of Sam Altman's piece in the Washington Post from back in July, Who Will Control the Future of AI? A democratic vision for artificial intelligence must prevail over an authoritarian one. Lehane continues, shared prosperity is as near and measurable as the new jobs and growth to come from building the needed infrastructure. Soon, AI will help our children do things we can't. Not far off is a future in which everyone's lives can be better than anyone's life is now. And so they say the goal of this document is to work with policymakers to make sure that that future comes to fruition. And indeed, this is not just a policy appeal. This is appeal to an American vision of AI. By way of historical example, Lehane discusses why automobiles didn't take root in Europe where they were invented. He writes, In the United Kingdom, where some of the earliest cars were introduced, the new industry's growth was stunted by regulation. The 1865 Red Flag Act required a flag bearer to walk ahead of any car to warn others on the road and wave the car aside in favor of horse-drawn transport. How could a person walk in front of a car without getting run over? Because of another requirement, that cars move no faster than four miles per hour. America, he says, took a very different approach to the car, merging private sector vision and innovation with public sector enlightenment to unlock the new technology and its economic and ultimately with World War I looming national security benefits. So they say, the incoming administration has the chance to, one, continue the country's global leadership and innovation while protecting national security, two, make sure we get it right on AI access and benefits from the start, and three, maximize the economic opportunity of AI for communities across the country. So what are some of the specifics? Section one is called competitiveness and security. And basically this says the federal government needs to clear the way by preempting state-by-state regulations in order to allow the AI industry's development of frontier models to, quote, best ensure that they promote U.S. economic and national security. This is something that Altman started talking about during SB 1047, and part of the answer that OpenAI gave as to why they didn't support that legislation, which was California-specific. They write in this piece that they want the federal government to, quote, develop alternatives to the growing patchwork of state and international regulations that risk hindering American competitiveness, such as by having the federal government leading the development and national security evaluations at home and establishing a U.S.-led international coalition that works towards shared safety standards abroad. They say that, quote, the federal government's approach to frontier model safety and security should streamline requirements, reduce bureaucratic obstacles to government industry collaboration, and incentivize companies to support U.S. competitiveness. Some of the things they say the government could do, including supporting the development of standards and safeguards, helping companies access secure infrastructure, create a defined voluntary pathway for companies that develop LLMs to work with government to define model evaluations, test models, and exchange information. I'm sure that voluntary word is going to be a point of consternation as we figure this out and quite a point of debate. And they also flag that the government could, quote, help develop training programs to cultivate the next generation of AI talent in the U.S., especially in areas of the country that have not benefited from previous waves of innovation. The next section is about rules of the road. 
And this is the core of OpenAI advocating for basically common sense regulations. They hone in on child safety issues. They discuss deep fakes, if orthogonally, by talking about how to apply provenance data to all AI-generated audiovisual content. And they say, quote, people should be empowered to personalize their AI tools, including through controls on how their personal data is used. Interestingly, this piece seems to have learned a lesson from the debate around SB 1047, where they focus their rules of the road section on concerns that regulators and lawmakers have right now, including things like deep fakes and abuse of minors, as opposed to concerns that might be for the future in terms of the more existential risk type of issues. The last piece of the story is what they call infrastructure as destiny. And this is a drum that obviously Sam Altman has been beating very loudly for some time now. OpenAI writes, We believe that building enough infrastructure is not just vital for ensuring that AI around the world is based on US rather than China-based technology. It's an unmissable opportunity to catalyze a reindustrialization of the United States. Successful nations turn resources into competitive advantages. In the AI era, chips, data, energy, and talent are the resources that will underpin continued U.S. leadership. And as with the mass production of the automobile, marshalling these resources will create widespread economic opportunity and reinforce our global competitiveness. Basically, they say that there is a win-win, a two-for-one available to us here. That to win the AI race, we have to build out the infrastructure, and that to build out the infrastructure, we necessarily have to create tens of thousands of skilled trade jobs. They note that, quote, today, demand for compute and energy far outstrips the available supply while an estimated $175 billion in global funds is weighted to be invested in AI infrastructure. They have a warning. If the U.S. doesn't move fast to channel these resources into projects that support democratic AI ecosystems around the world, the funds will flow to projects backed and shaped by the CCP. Now, they share tons of ideas, which read basically like thought starters and things that individual politicians could pick up on and really run with. For example, AI economic zones that, quote, significantly speed up the permitting process for building AI infrastructure like new solar arrays, wind farms, and nuclear reactors. They call for a nationwide AI education strategy and, quote, dramatically increased federal spending on power and data transmission and streamlined approval for new lines. So this is clearly just an opening salvo. What's interesting to me about it is the fact that it so clearly represents the sense that this is a moment of opportunity and an important inflection point. OpenAI is backing this up by hosting a gathering in Washington, D.C. on January 30th to, quote, preview the state of AI advancement and how it can drive economic growth. There are so many different organizations and interests that are hoping for much out of Trump's first 100 days. I'll be very interested to see if and where AI hits on that agenda, if at all. There's certainly going to be plenty of discourse towards that direction, and I will cover it here as it becomes important. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.